As I've been away from the office and slightly removed from the tech news space for over a week now, the launch of the new AMD Threadripper 2 processors has come and gone without a peep about it coming from this channel. That's because this monster 32 core 2990 WX processor has been sitting at home since the day after I left. I've had a chance to sit and watch and or read a number of different reviews and consolidate my thoughts and while this video will certainly contain my own testing data, I already pretty much knew what to expect. What I hadn't anticipated was how my feelings about this chip would kind of flip flop between different extremes multiple times during this process. Ready to dive into custom water cooling but unclear about what parts you might need? Check out Thermaltake's new M360 Plus RGB kit. Featuring a D5 pump res combo, 16mm hard tube, Pacific C Pro fittings, and the best RGB implementation on the market, the M360 Plus fits all mainstream Intel and AMD sockets and is fully expandable as your system evolves. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. So I suppose I'd be remiss in my duties as a reviewer if I didn't put right out there my test results. Now, in the next few slides, you'll see a comparison between my existing build using a 1950X and the exact same build just with the 2990WX slotted in instead. For reference, here are my system specs. I'm running an ASUS ROG X399 Zenith Extreme motherboard updated to the latest BIOS and four eight gigabyte sticks of G-Skill Trident Z RGB memory at 3200 megahertz. The GPU is an EVGA GTX 1080 Ti SC2 and the cooler I'm using is the Enermax LickTech TR4 360 AIO. Everything is housed inside the Be Quiet Darkbase Pro 900 Revision 2 case Although for the sake of testing and to try to minimize any thermal limitations, I removed the front, top, and tempered glass side panel while benchmarking. Now, I wanna let you guys know that I have a full set of testing data on the way, comparing not only these two chips, but also the new 2950X and other HEDT parts from Intel, including their 7900X and the flagship 7980XE. In that video, we'll talk about overclocking, temps, and power consumption. However, in this video, I wanted to just touch on generational differences, test setup variables, and performance limitations of using a 32-core processor. My standard CPU test gauntlet includes nine different tests and 11 total results, as some tests include both single and multi-core scores. Here are the slides. Now, by far the most disappointing result here comes from our tests involving video editing and manipulation. Both Handbrake and Adobe Premiere are programs that I use all the time to transcode, edit, and export footage, specifically for this YouTube channel. I was really looking forward to upgrading to this 32 core monster, as theoretically I should be doubling up my available processing power and chopping significant time off of my projects. However, several factors play into why the 16 core first generation 1950X actually outperforms the 2990WX in these tasks. The primary reason is that the available cores just simply aren't being utilized to their fullest. Right now, it's kind of unclear if this is a limitation with Windows being unable to properly address 32 cores specifically in tasks like this. Although programs like Cinebench have absolutely no issue leveraging all 64 threads to their fullest capacity. 
However, keep in mind that testing results from sites like Pharonix, which I'll link to down below, show massive improvements in performance while using Linux as opposed to Windows 10. It's certainly possible that future Windows releases will show improvements, just as they did following the initial release of the Ryzen 5 and 7 processors last year. For that, we'll just kind of have to wait and see. Another possibility is that this is an Adobe problem. Premiere is notoriously picky about hardware, running better on some than on others, and typically favoring Intel over AMD. Whether this is due to clock speed, memory latency, or just Intel padding Adobe's pockets, the fact remains that often a comparable Intel part will significantly outperform one from AMD. I was hoping that this would not be the case with a 32 core processor, as I would think that there is enough torque here to power through any minor platform bias. However, this is not the case, clearly. CPU utilization in Premiere was absolutely atrocious. And upon realizing that, at least for now, this is just how things are going to be, I considered not switching over to the 2990WX and even just returning it outright. Was this, in fact, just an $1,800 mistake? I had thought about this many times while I was on vacation and my new AMD toy sat in my office, an unopened thermal paste virgin. I watched review after review where sites praised overall performance while panning results in Premiere, the program that I use most often. The conclusion I came to was this. The 2990WX has the letter W in its name for a reason. This is a workstation part. It may be branded as a high-end desktop enthusiast processor, but when it comes down to it, right now I'd say 99.9% .9 of users do not need 32 cores. Even someone like me who thought they could take advantage of what AMD had to offer this time around really can't, at least not yet. This is validated by the fact that even applications as CPU intensive as Handbrake or Adobe Premiere just kind of throw up their hands and say, what do you want me to do with all these cores? You need to be doing some serious 3D modeling work in Blender or multitasking like an absolute boss in order to justify this kind of purchase. This doesn't mean you have four tabs open in Chrome while you're playing Fortnite. This means something like transcoding one clip while editing a 4K timeline while rendering another image. In August of 2018, if you buy this for really any other purpose, you've made a mistake. This is not a release for everyone. And in fact, it's hardly a release for anyone. But if you need 32 cores and 64 threads, you already know who you are. And the 2990WX definitely will not disappoint. Thanks to some initial reviews diving into the issue of core utilization, I kept an eye on mine through hardware monitor throughout this testing process. Lo and behold, the benchmarks with the biggest negative disparity between the 1950X and the 2990WX were the ones where the average package utilization was the lowest. Similarly, at the top of the chart, we can see Blender basically maxing everything out, and this is one of the strongest results for the new CPU. I wanted to see if there was a way I could coax the 2990 into stretching its legs more. When you're dealing with processors, there are really only so many variables that you can change that might have this effect. While something like overclocking will definitely give you more performance, it's unlikely that utilization will go up. And in fact, it could even potentially go down. What we need to do is find a way to make the Threadripper chip feel more stress. So I reran both Handbrake and Premiere with the following variables. I swapped the memory configuration from four sticks to eight sticks, and then I took it all the way down to two sticks. I also disabled half of our 32 cores, and then I disabled 24 of our 32 cores, leaving us with only eight. That in and of itself is a crazy statement that I'm able to disable 24 cores on a processor and not be sitting at some negative number. The last thing I tried was swapping everything back to stock, so four memory dims and all 32 cores enabled, but I shut off simultaneous multi-threading. As you can see from this chart, utilization adjusted accordingly, with the 2990WX really feeling the burn with just eight cores enabled. But I needed to make sure that I was 
striking the right balance between high utilization and a high core and thread count. And that sweet spot came when I went up to 32 cores, but just restricted it to 32 threads. Here's a performance chart that shows the results of my testing. Running all 32 cores, but turning off SMT gave us our best results by far, and even outperformed our 1950X. Now, this may seem kind of like a so what moment, given that we're talking about a part that not only costs twice as much, but should theoretically have twice the horsepower. But when we're starting at a spot where the 2990WX is way behind, this is a significant improvement. In fact, this is the configuration I've left it in and how I will be running it in the future, at least until some fixes are released. I won't be ditching my 32 core AMD part anytime soon. I'll be using it in my daily editing rig for better or for worse. And I'm hoping that either AMD updates the microcode, Microsoft bakes in some better high core count support into Windows, or Adobe pumps out a new version that will show significant performance improvements. After all, this did happen with Ryzen and with original Threadripper, so it's definitely not unheard of. In fact, with the ever-expanding AMD user base, I would imagine it would be difficult for companies to ignore this market segment. So my fingers are crossed that we see fixes coming soon. That's it for my initial look at AMD's beastly 32 core monster, the 2990WX. What do you think of the new Threadripper releases? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to get subscribed so you don't miss my follow-up full comparison video and a lot more content coming down the pipe real soon. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And that's Newman. And I'll see you guys next time.